I'm happy to welcome Martin Videos, CEO at Redwood Pharma. Welcome, Martin. This year uh, is a year of renewal and alignment for Redwood Pharma. Our mission continues to be the development of pharmaceuticals and over-the-counter therapies uh, in ophthalmology where there are unmet medical needs. Our current focus is to bring RP501, our OTC dry eye treatment to market in Europe. And we have a clinical trial underway currently in Europe to support a CE mark application. Additional toxicology work is ongoing basically to support the um, submission for uh, CE marking. In January of this year, we had a scientific advisory meeting with the US FDA, a very positive uh, meeting where they uh, approved our or accepted our phase three design and we are evaluating our strategic options with RP101, our moderate to severe dry eye therapy um, targeted to postmenopausal women. And we continue to scout for new ophthalmology programs that can leverage the IntelliGel uh, platform where we can build on synergies uh, with controlled release and build in, building and extending our portfolio. So I'd like to just to reinforce uh, the, the business case and the investment case for Redwood Pharma. Uh, today, the global pharmaceutical industry continues strong growth. Uh, we see both in ph pharmaceuticals and medical devices that uh, the industries remain strong, demand remains strong. Um, the graph on the right shows you the growth in revenues over the last two decades for pharmaceuticals, which uh, which gives us a, a very good uh, indicator of the, the demand in the marketplace. And R&D spending uh, has also increased uh, with, um, the, in the last 10 years, I should say, from $127 billion in 2012 to $200 billion in 2020. So this really um, uh, strengthens the idea that pharmaceutical companies and society in general are interested in, in new products. If we take a deeper dive into the ophthalmology market, we see also that there's a, a very steady growth. Um, the market was valued at roughly $36 billion globally in 2020, and a rising prevalence in eye disorders uh, are expected to boost the, the market growth over the, the coming years through 2028. And the, the largest uh, dry eye, or sorry, the largest therapies within ophthalmology are in dry eye, age-related macular degeneration, glaucoma. Um, and so uh, we see that it's very positive in the marketplace, this interest for drugs within uh, eye care. Our focus at Redwood Pharma currently with our two programs is within the dry eye disease area. For those of you who don't know much about it, um, there are over 50 million people who suffer from dry eye disease in both the US and EU. And there are an estimated 55% of the dry eye sufferers who consult eye specialists. It's the number one reason why, um, why people go in and see an eye specialist. And typically they start with uh, first line therapies of artificial tears. And on the graph on the left, you see that um, first line therapies are expected to grow from 2019, uh, from 2.3 billion to 2.9 billion in 2030. And we see also growth in the other lines of therapy, uh, in, and most uh, um, interestingly enough, in the segment of anti-inflammatories. Dry eye is a multifactorial disease that there are many different causes of it, and we, there's not one silver bullet to solve dry eye. Uh, so more effective and convenient uh, treatments are needed. Today, as I said, uh, first-line therapies of artificial tears are most common, where about um, 80% of all sufferers try it. Uh, when artificial tears are insufficient, they move towards other stronger active ingredients and go to second line and third line therapies um, uh, in, in, in succession. So after first line therapy, you know, many sufferers turn towards dexamethasone and even cyclosporin as a third line therapy. And these two products have their disadvantages with, um, uh, with, with side effects in that one of them, uh, the cyclosporin, tinkers with the Im immune system. So today, most products that are out on the marketplace are actually trying to treat the entire uh, panoply of dry eye 
uh, sufferers. And uh, unfortunately, uh, those aren't going to be effective in the long run. When we believe that Redwood Pharma, that more targeted therapies are needed. So uh, let me take the opportunity of presenting the company. Uh, as I said, Redwood Pharma develops ophthalmic drugs where there are large unmet medical needs. Uh, the RP101 program is based on estrogen, an active biological pharmaceutical for the treatment of moderate to severe dry eye in postmenopausal women. Then we have RP501, which aims to treat a, a mild to moderate sufferers uh, in a wider patient population, um, and we are looking to treat both men and women using the IntelliGel platform, which is the, uh, the underlying uh, foundation of RP501. We have an exclusive license for the use of uh, IntelliGel in applications of, uh, in ophthalmology, and uh, we look to expand our portfolio using this, um, this base uh, drug delivery system. So now a little bit about five, RP501. We believe that will be a better first-line treatment for dry eye disease. It demonstrated um, efficacy and uh, safety in a recent phase two trial for RP101, where we could reduce uh, symptoms and uh, objective measures with one or two installations a day. So uh, based on IntelliGel, it, allow, it, uh, it allows the, uh, the substance to behave like water at room temperature, but when it is placed on the front of the eye, it cause, the heat of the eye causes it to uh, become more viscous and thus stay on the eye longer and have high wetting of the eye. So we are able to increase uh, the residence time of RP501. And we believe that we can reduce the number of installations per day with this uh, product that will be on the eye longer. We believe that it also will be able to uh, help a aging population to reduce symptoms as we're using um, uh, more computers and, and mobile phones and, and causing dry eye uh, symptoms. This is an increased screen time that we're all familiar with. And we believe that RP501 has the potential of providing relief to both men and women of all ages. So our focus today is uh, in the company is really primarily to bring RP501 to market. Um, as I said earlier, um, it, is a, it behaves like um, artificial tears at room temperature, uh, but it uh, actually becomes more viscous, viscous when it's applied to the front of the eye. It actually takes advantage of the two categories of, of uh, therapies that are out there. You have artificial tears that, that, that are effective in the short run, but are eliminated from the eye by blinking. Then you have gels that have come as a, as a next generation that have good, good um, eff efficacy but are a little bit more difficult in terms of applying to the eye. We come, RP501 I should say, becomes the next generation where we take benefits of both of those categories and, and build a drug that actually, or sorry, a, an over-the-counter therapy that will be uniquely positioned out in the marketplace. So with a market study that we've performed, we say that we see that we're solving the primary objectives of or the needs of, uh, of customers. That is efficacy and convenience. And today we're underway with a clinical trial to, to show safety, tolerability, and efficacy in 60 men and women with and without contact lenses. And our idea now is to generate results in the first half of 2023 that will serve as the basis for an application for a CE mark uh, next year. So our short-term goal is to seek CE mark approval in the EU to commercialize and launch the product in the EU. And our intermediate goal is to build an engine of revenue growth through sales and licensing partnerships uh, to develop a, a branded product that either can be used by ourselves or by other uh, partners in regions that they have commercial strengths. Now I'd like to just give you an overview of RP101, our novel treatment for moderate to severe dry eye. Uh, it is a low-dose estrogen-based topical therapy for moderate to severe dry eye in postmenopausal women. And today there aren't any uh, reliable treatments currently for this uh, target patient population. And we believe a red, red would, that RP101 will be the first hormone treatment to treat dry eye as it targets an underlying biological mechanism of the disease uh, rather than just treating the symptoms. 
where we have proof now that we can actually stimulate tear fluid production, stabilize the tear film, reduce symptoms of dry eye. And we completed a, a phase two trial in Europe, which exhibited safety and efficacy with uh, doses up to twice a day. And these results uh, confirm those of two prior phase two trials in the US. And, uh, and we also had success this year uh, with our FDA meeting where the, the agency accepted our phase three design. And this trust was a, a significant milestone as it clearly reduces the clinical risks associated with this program that can go, go into phase three. It has, uh, RP101 has blockbuster potential as that we estimate that it roughly 10 million women in the US and EU alone uh, that uh, could use this product. With that, I'd just like to give you an overview of the success that we had in the phase two trial. We looked at uh, both uh, objective and subjective uh, endpoints. We had uh, success in showing tear fluid production uh, with a Sherma test where we can produce 150% uh, increase over uh, tear, uh, tear production over tear film production over baseline. We showed also significant uh, improvement over the vehicle, which was important. So we saw statistical improvement in a basket of objective measures, including uh, tear breakup time, and all objective parameters showed parallel results in quick onset. And on the symptom side, we saw after 90 days, all symptoms showed improvement, some as early not for, as of 14 days. So we believe that RP101 is well positioned to go into phase three. Just as a note, um, Antelogel in this uh, trial was used as the placebo control and there itself also showed safety and efficacy in treating dry eyes. So that was the basis of us starting this new program. Uh, I'd like to just quickly introduce our, our leadership team here. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Redwood, I'm very um, grateful to have a, uh, an experienced team with Big Pharma in terms of clinical development. Um, uh, we, I'm, uh, we, we've accomplished a lot within the company and we continue with uh, our plans to, uh, to expand our, our, our portfolio. And um, I also want to uh, congratulate uh, and welcome Björn Larsson, who has uh, stepped in as our new chairman of the board, who's taken over from Gunnar Matson, who uh, held the, the position for six years and, and did, a, uh, I, in my opinion, an outstanding job of uh, helping the company grow. Uh, Björn comes from Big Pharma and the Medtech area with a commercial focus, having worked with AstraZeneca and Novo Nordisk uh, earlier and with other uh, Medtech company. So um, he will be a, uh, a key person in helping us uh, move into the area as well of uh, OTC devices. And then uh, none the least, uh, just to give you an idea of the, the platform of uh, intellectual property that the company is built on, we, ha we have patents in, in several different areas. Uh, the IntelliGel platform is supported by patents in all the major geographies in Europe, US, Japan, and in China. Uh, we also have applied for our own RP501 patent application for uh, the use of IntelliGel in the treatment of dry eye. And RP101 is supported by, a, um, by patents in the US, the largest market for dry eye, uh, for the use of estrogen uh, in the treatment of the disease. So our near-term challenges today are to successfully complete the RP501 clinical trial and to use the output of that trial as a submission for uh, our CE mark application. And this represents a, a, a change for the company as we are now shifting uh, more a little to the, uh, commercially to see to that we can develop a branded product and explore new regional partnerships. Um, and lastly, we also are looking for new op uh, opportunities within ophthalmology with primary focus on either pharmaceuticals or medical device. So with that, um, I look forward to report more positive developments in the coming year and want to thank uh, Michael and Bezdok for the opportunity to present today. 
Thank you so much, Martin, for your presentation. Um, why have you chosen to put more focus on RP501 rather than RP101? Um, the, our, our reasons are, are, are quite simple. We are cho choosing a product development program that's closer to market that uh, allows us to come closer to profitability and to create cash flow. Um, we feel that it's uh, a prudent decision. Um, so we are going to continue to look at developing RP101 and evaluate our strategic options. Uh, but in, in parallel, in the meantime, um, um, many or most of our resources, the majority of our resources are being going, to, going to be put from a regular perspective and clinical perspective to file a CE mark application next year and to launch it uh, soon thereafter. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, speaking of which, uh, what's your strategy for making sure your path towards commercialization is as smooth as possible? Oh, it's, a, it's a very good question. There has been a lot of, uh, 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 I should say, there, it's been a dynamic area from a regulatory perspective where the European um, area has now uh, updated their regulations in terms of medical devices. So we've changed from what's called MDD. Uh, regulatory framework to MDR, and this has caused a little bit of upheaval among uh, pharmaceutical and uh, over-the-counter uh, companies that are looking to uh, comply now with the new regulations, and it's also had an effect on notified bodies, which are, are the de facto, the, the, the regulatory agencies that grant CE marks. Sure. We believe that we have um, a very good uh, path forward, a clear path forward, um, we've engaged regulatory consultants who have connections within these notified bodies to help uh, uh, get these time slots for review at the notified bodies and to ensure that we uh, can do this in an expeditious manner. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, you mentioned your, your strategy for growth in the coming years. Uh, where do you see Redwood Pharma in the next two years? Well, it's, it's, uh, that's also a good question. We, we are looking at uh, bringing 501 to, the, to market, basically to, as I said earlier in the presentation, that uh, we want it to be a, a, an engine of growth in the intermediate term. Uh, we would like to also uh, expand our portfolio, either with OTC product or products or with pharmaceuticals. But I think um, uh, that will be a nice position. And if we can have one or two products uh, uh, into the company at that, uh, at that point as well. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thanks so much for answering the questions and for your presentation. And we look forward to following Redwood Pharma. Thank you. Thank you.